Our worship begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as your children, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 80, verses 7 through 15. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted.
second reading is from Philippians. Paul writes, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Good morning. So today we're in our Spark Bibles on page 302, We're going to read the story called The Parable of the Vineyard. And um, here's a a little picture. And look who's down in the bottom there. There's Squiggles. He's going to share another story with us today. This is called The Parable of the Vineyard. The Pharisees were a group of people who didn't like what Jesus said and treated Jesus very badly. Jesus told the Pharisees a story to help them understand that what they were doing was wrong. Jesus said, a man built a vineyard and planted grapes. He hired workers to care for the grapes. When the grapes were ripe, the man sent his servants one by one to get the grapes. But each time the workers watched the vineyard, they hurt the servants. The man tried sending his own son but they hurt him too. The Pharisees realized that Jesus was talking about them. Every time God sent someone to help them learn more about God, they were mean to that person instead of listening to what that person had to say. 
Jesus was there to save them, but they weren't even listening. And there's a little uh, practice down here that says, a little uh, activity that says, pretend you're picking and eating grapes. Stretch to reach for them. Pop one into your mouth and rub your tummy and say, it's delicious. But we're going to talk a little bit more about the people God sends to us right now. So sometimes pastors throw words around and they never really explain what those words mean. We just assume everybody knows. And one of those words is prophet. Now, a prophet is a person who has a special job to do by God. God calls that person and gives them a special message and says to them, I want you to share this message with other people. And in a section of our Bibles called the Old Testament, we hear a lot of stories about the prophets. And when the prophets came, sometimes they would give a message that people did not like hearing. Because, you know, sometimes when we're being told we're doing bad things, we just don't want to hear we're doing bad things. We want to be told everything that we're doing is wonderful and fantastic. And so what happens is when the prophets come and say to God's people, hey, I don't think you should be doing what you're doing, they got really, really upset and they hurt the prophets. They hurt the prophets many times. So God has these messages for us that help lead us into uh, our lives, that help us to grow in our understanding of who God is and how God wants us to live. And while we don't still have prophets like in the old days, we do still have people that God sends to us that help us to understand how God works and how God's love works and how God's grace works. He sends to us pastors and teachers. He sends to us parents and grandparents. He sends to us maybe neighbors, our friends, parents, all sorts of people that help us to know what it means to live our lives according to God's way. And so we, as God's children, have to listen to those people. Now, I'm going to call myself a child too, even though I'm really, really old. But I'm still a child too. And there's still ways that I'm still learning. And there's still ways that I'm still growing. And you know, there are still ways that all the people in our church and all the people in our community are still teaching me about what it means to be a child of God. So if I can still be learning about what it means to be a child of God, and you can still be learning about what it means to be a child of God, we've got a lot of work to do. And this is something that we can do together. And so I want you to take a few moments and I want you to think about the types of people that God has given you in your life that are helping you understand what it means to be a child of God and to grow as a child of God. And then I want you to just take a few moments and offer up a prayer to God, thanking God for all those amazing people in your life and for the love and grace that they show you so that you can show love and grace to others. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, and dug a wine press in it and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized the slaves. They beat one, killed another, and stoned yet another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and we will gather the inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the landowner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretched people to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures 
The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruit of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. Now, when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Now, has it dawned on anybody that we've had a lot of stories about vineyards recently? It seems like every week for the past few weeks, Jesus has been taking us back and forth from one vineyard to another. In biblical liter literature, the vineyard is an analogy for the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God works. And we need to pay close attention. Jesus just may be speaking to us. In this parable, often called the parable of the wicked tenants, Jesus is sharing not only a warning, but a lesson in history. And as we've learned time and time again, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So let's dig in and see what this week's lesson has to teach us. In this parable, Jesus is addressing the religious people of his day, the chief priests and the Pharisees in particular. Now, the chief priests were the religious leaders of the time. They were the ones who were instructed with the responsibility of interpreting the Torah and then sharing its meaning with all the people of Israel. The Pharisees were the strict adherents to the Torah often criticizing and correcting people for not following the word of God in the way that they and the chief priests had determined it should be followed. We can often see this kind of attitude still lived out in our religious world today. So Jesus is teaching and it is directed at the religious people of his day. And not only the religious people, but the ones who claim to be the most religious. The ones who said they knew the will of God more than the common people. These were the ones who claimed to know God's will. And what did they do? Well, they were the ones who beat, stoned, and killed the prophets. The prophets were the people called by God to share a message of warning to God's people. The warning being that the people needed to turn from their ways to get back to what God was calling them to, repentance. But we don't like being told that what we're doing is wrong. So what do we do? Well, we kill the messenger instead of heeding the message. Now, Israel has a long history of this. The basic story of the Old Testament is basically God sending prophets to warn Israel that if they do not turn from their ways, the punishment would be exile. Israel then would kill those prophets and then they would go on with business as usual. Eventually, God's word would come true and Israel was forced into exile and driven from their land. Now, why is all this important today? I had a conversation recently with a rabbi friend of mine a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about prophets in the Bible. We were discussing why we only hear from a handful of prophets, when it was obvious that Israel had many more people who were called by God to have a prophetic voice. But yet our scriptures only record the workings of a few of them. The rabbi shared with me that this question is actually raised and discussed in the Talmud. 
The Talmud teaches that the reason prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and so on are given a place in our scriptures is because these prophets still speak to us today. And if that is the case, when we do not heed the warning of the prophets of old and follow their direction, then we are simply acting like the wicked tenants and killing the prophets one more time. But it was more than the prophets that lose their life in this story. It was also the son, the heir. The wicked tenants decided if they killed the heir, then they could be on the top of the heap and they could inherit the land. And when the landowner dies or is met with an accident, the son and the heir in this story, of course, is Jesus. They would inherit everything. And as we know the scriptures, Jesus was indeed killed by the religious leaders of his day. And they were hoping that they would be able to stand in a safe place and that their arrogance and hubris would win out. In the end, this arrogance does not work for the wicked tenants. They are removed from their places of honor and those places will be given to others. Last week, we heard Jesus teach us that the tax collectors and the prostitutes were entering the kingdom of heaven ahead of the religious people. As I was preparing this message, there was a question that got written down on my study papers. What does it mean to reject Jesus? And I think this parable gives us a good example. When our humanness gets in the way of us following the teachings of our master, and when we think we know better than Jesus, then we become the wicked tenants and we participate in the same plot to rid ourselves of the people who call us to go against our human nature. I see this played out in our religious leaders of today, time and again. When they abandon the teachings of Scripture, For the false gods of money and power, it becomes only a matter of time before God forces them into exile, not unlike the people of Israel again and again. Remember when I was in seminary, I can remember telling one of my classmates that I didn't like the Old Testament and I would never preach on the Old Testament. I was going to be a New Testament pastor. Then what happens? I develop an interest in it. And when I finally realized what the Old Testament was saying, I realized that the Old Testament still speaks to us today. In our reading today from Isaiah, God calls to us again. God has made a vineyard, and this vineyard, the kingdom of God, is not producing the crop it was designed to produce. Instead, it's producing wild grapes. So God plans to level it. And the parable that Jesus tells us, he will give that vineyard to those who will fulfill the word of God. The question then becomes, what kind of tenant are we? Are we the kind who humbly takes our position and does the will of the landowner? Are we the kind of tenant whose arrogance leads us to want to take over and make it ours and fill it with our wants and desires? The vineyard is ours to care for. The choice is ours to proclaim. What kind of tenant will we be? Amen.
With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life, that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today, especially Doris, Maggie, Joan, Verna, Rayburn, Kim, Jim, Shirley, Arletta, Joe, Don Mark, Linda, Dana, Doris, Llewellyn, Sandy, David, John, Jerry, Rowan, Hildegard, Jane, Grace, Paul, Carol, Matt, Paul, Rochelle, Holly, Alice, Tom, Nancy, Jesus, Alberto, and those we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all managers in our community and for all who seek employment. Give hope and a future to those who lack meaningful work, those who have been marginalized or abused in the workplace, and those who desire new opportunities. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the saints who teach us to live faithfully in your vineyard. May our chorus join theirs until our labor is complete. Lord, in your mercy. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in our loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth into our week with the peace and love of God that we share with everyone as we continue to work in God's vineyard. Amen. <laughs>